bullying, and many other actions that undermine the rule of law, Mr. Speaker, as well as actions that are, that are unethical, illegal, and that severely breach public trust as contained in the motion by Honorable Wenge Mutusi, Mr. Speaker. Mutusi, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, in supporting the removal of the Deputy President from office, we are rejecting the invitation by Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa to accept tribal bigotry, Mr. Speaker. Skewed resource allocation and the exploitation and domination of, of minorities as feta complete in Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I move forward, or before I go on with what I wanted to say on the motion, Mr. Speaker, I would like to take this chance first to respond to some of the issues that he has raised in the House a few minutes ago, or that his responses, Mr. Speaker. In the first place, his response has came very late in the day to the House, Mr. Speaker. He tabled his response at 4 p.m. in the evening today, Mr. Speaker. And he should have done it either yesterday evening or this morning, Mr. Speaker, so that the House can get enough time to police what he has said, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, some of, one of the grounds that is being accused that, of Mr. Rigadi Gashagwa for impeachment, Mr. Speaker, is, power, is the issue of uh, uh, power, uh, what he calls shares, shareholding, Mr. Speaker. He has said Kenya is a company with shareholding. But in his response, he comes here and tells the House that he did not mean that. What he meant is that he was talking about political parties, Mr. Speaker, and listed the political parties that have formed coalitions within Kenya Kwanzaa, Mr. Speaker, including Ford Kenya, ANC, PA, and all other parties that have formed what is called the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to, I want to, re to contradict what he's saying, what he said by saying that Political pa parties are national in nature. Ford Kenya is a national party. ANC is a national party. All the political parties that, made a co that formed a coalition with Kenya Kwanzaa are political parties Mr. that are of national, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in this country, under the Constitution, you are not allowed to form a tribal party. You're not allowed to form a religious pa political party, Mr. Speaker. You are not allowed to form a Mulima political party, Mr. Speaker. You, that is very clear in the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. And if the Deputy President is not aware of that, I can read out for him, Mr. Speaker. Under Article, Mr. Speaker, 91, every political party shall have a national character as prescribed by, by an Act of Parliament, have democratically elected governing body, Mr. Speaker. And it also says in Part 2, a political party shall not be founded on a religious, linguistic, racial, ethnic, gender, or regional basis, Mr. Speaker, or seek to engage in advocacy of hatred, like what he does sometimes, on any such basis, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you cannot equate political parties to what the Deputy President has been propagating for the last two years in this country, Mr. Speaker. The, president, the Deputy President has told Kenyans in no uncertain terms, that Kenya is a shareholding company. Order, and, honorable members. And if you Order. do not vote, if you do Brighton not vote for Kenya Kwanzaa, group. you do not have Order any shares, Mr. Speaker. Order, you're gone, and your team. Gone. Mr. Speaker, members now are excited because they are not happy with the response the Deputy President has given them. Now they want to vote and go yes. home. I know what they are doing. I know, but let's, let's, let's prosecute the matter. We have to respond to the issues he has, he has brought to the House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, political parties are not equal to regional and ethnic, you know, conglomerations that the Deputy Speaker, the Deputy President has been advocating for the last two years, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to give him a good example like ODM. ODM has sent the other day six experts under the broad-based government, Mr. Speaker. Six experts. Where are those experts coming from? One is from the coast. <laughs> Beatrice the school is from Turkana. Oparanya is from, the, from, uh, from, from Western. You know, oh, uh, uh, the Attorney General is from Kisumu. 
Mr. Speaker, him when he's talking about 30% of Fort Kenya and 30% of ANC, he thinks those positions were given to lawyers as a community, Mr. Speaker. When Fort Kenya is a national party, those positions belong to members of Fort Kenya who are in Mombasa, who are in Migori, who are in Kakamega, who are in Bungoma, who are in Eldoret. Fort Kenya has membership in all the, the country, has membership, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, that ground is not, he cannot controvert that ground by saying that he was talking about the power sharing within Kenya Kwanzaa. No, he was talking about ethnic groups, Mr. Speaker. He said this government was formed by two ethnic groups, and that is how they are going to share power, Mr. Speaker. So that ground stands, Mr. Speaker, and that ground is, is impeachable, Mr. Speaker, on the Deputy President. The other issue, Mr. Speaker, I want to respond to that he has raised here, Mr. Speaker, is the issue of national security. He said that the NSIS, Mr. Speaker, can be called out whenever they are out of order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the man Deputy President sits in the National Security Council, Mr. Speaker. He doesn't need to call out any government organ in the streets, Mr. Speaker, like, a, like the people who do their things in the streets, Mr. Speaker. He's a man who sits in every governance organ of this country, Mr. Speaker. All organs of government, all governing organs are also oversighted by committee of this House, Mr. Speaker. What happens, Mr. Speaker, in this country if every member of parliament goes out there castigating governing bodies and constitutionally created bodies of governors, Mr. Speaker? We are going to have anarchy in this country. Mr. Speaker, I'm not convinced that he has answered in any way that question as to why he was castigating uh, bodies like the NSIS and the police out there when he's the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. On that ground, Mr. Speaker, I feel he's impeachable on that, Mr. Speaker. He has not given us any sufficient answer to that question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issue of Justice Maina, he said that he was not attacking her because of the judgment she rendered against him, Mr. Speaker. And he said that he had filed a petition with the, with the Judicial Service Commission, Mr. Speaker. He who wants equity must come with clean hands. You cannot castigate, castigate a judge in, in the rallies, in burials, and then you want JSC to listen to you. You can't have both ways. If he wanted JSC to deal with that matter, if he was unhappy with the way the judge has handled his case, Mr. Speaker, he should not have castigated her in a burial, Mr. Speaker. He should not have talked about her in a in a very demeaning manner, Mr. Speaker, he should have kept his cool and filed his petition with the Judicial Service Commission, Mr. Speaker. On that account, Mr. Speaker, he has failed the leadership and integrity, Mr. Speaker, under the Integrity Act, Mr. Speaker, and on that account, he's impeachable, Mr. Speaker. My last point, Mr. Speaker, is the issue of the renovation of the, his, his house in Karen, or the official residence of the Deputy President Karen, Mr. Speaker. You remember the deputy president when he was assuming office, when he was taking oath of office at Kasarani, Mr. Speaker, the way he lectured us, the way he told us that they have inherited empty coffers, Mr. Speaker. There is no money in this country. The former regime has looted and gone with everything and goes ahead after two months to renovate his house, his official residence with over 100 million, 45 million shillings, Mr. Speaker. He may talk a wabi, Mr. Speaker. Where has that money come from? Where has that money come from? He has not convinced us in any way how that money was spent, how those companies were paid, and on that account, Mr. Speaker, because of misuse of public resources, he is impeachable on that account also, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to say this. When we gave ourselves the, the new constitution in 2010, we knew very well that we were coming from an era where we cannot impeach the president, we cannot impeach ministers, we cannot impeach the deputy president. Kenyans gave themselves the new constitution and they put in there Article 150, knowing very well that one day they will hold their leaders, the president, the deputy president accountable, Mr. Speaker. And they gave that mandate to this house, Mr. Speaker, and the Senate, parliament in general, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was shocked under the public participation.
People saying that Kufa Makanga, Kufa driver Mr. Speaker. We cannot allow the driver to die. Because it is an issue, we are witnessing a situation where the Makanga wants to take the steering by force. And what happens after that? The driver, the, the driver is carrying 55 million Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. We cannot allow the driver to die because 55 million Kenyans are going to die with him. But the Makanga, who is just hanging at the door there of the Matatu, can go. The driver is not with us in this parliament. The petition we have, the motion we have before us today is the motion of the Makanga. And we are going to deal with him perpendicularly. And thoroughly, Mr. Speaker, this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the House that us, the people of the minority, the Azimio people, Mr. Speaker, we have lived like orphans in this country for the last two years. Why do I say so? Mr. Speaker, we are taxpayers. Some of the places that contribute to the highest taxes in this country are areas that are dominated by Azimio people. And then somebody comes here and tells me, you are not a shareholder, you are not going to get services, you are not going to get development. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Does the taxes that are paid by the Azimio people count for nothing? Mr. Speaker, and it is coming from the high office. The high office of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the time we are going to correct this thing so that it never happens again. So that we don't have another Deputy President who comes later. Because when we impeach this one, another one is going to be appointed. This is a lesson to the next one. That if you misbehave, we will just take you through this Goleta, Mr. Goleta, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to conclude by saying this. Let us not pastorize offices. We don't have any ill will.